we are going home. He went home, immediately engaged in a political campaign. In it, his adversary used his alcoholism. But Bill kept sober. And in all the years since, until his recent death, he kept the faith. Now we see in retrospect that this really meant that the first group of Alcoholics Anonymous had already taken shape in Akron, the city on the hill. I think before concluding this part of the project, that all of us should humbly reflect on the marvelous chain of circumstances, doubtless ordained by providence, which had brought us thus far. It required the humility of Dr. Hume in his office telling a patient, only a spiritual experience can save you, my art cannot. It required a messenger, his patient, who came to my friend, Ebby. And then it required Ebby taking the time and caring enough to look me up. No personal link in the chain of those early events could have been more critical and important than that of Dr. Silkworth, the man we later called the little doctor who loved drunks. We must never forget that it was he who told us the nature of our malady. It was he who during his lifetime attended some 40,000 cases. After AA started, some 12,000 cases. Ah, yes, his contribution was indeed indispensable. He was, I repeat, the little doctor who did love drugs. And all this while, for years before, during all of those terrible times of drinking, Lois stood by me. If she hadn't, I probably wouldn't have been alive to be a part of this change. Lois, at this point, I should think it would be a good idea if you'd put on a statement on here uh, of uh, what your reactions were, first to my seeming to be well and so on, the reactions to the first early days. Well, of course, I was overjoyed. And when I went up to see you in the hospital, you were so different. I knew something tremendous had happened to you. I knew that you'd never drink again. I never doubted. And I was, of course, tremendously grateful. And for quite a long time, that feeling of joy stayed with me. But after a while, it began to wear off, and I didn't know just what was the matter. And I found myself losing my temper over trifles. Until one day, you asked me to get, hurry up and get ready to go to a meeting, and I threw a shoe at you. You remember? And that didn't concern you too much, but it did me. Why had I lost my temper over such a trifle? So I then began to think of my own relation to you and to myself, my inner self. 